Grace, mercy, peace, and every blessing are yours. Through God, your Father, through His Son, and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So what blessings do you seek in this life? Millions of dollars, perhaps? Then you really have to ask, well, what are you going to do with that? Because the money by itself doesn't do much good. But maybe you'd like to buy a, a bigger house or a, a second house. Maybe you want a, a newer car. Maybe you want to travel a little bit. How about your relationships? Maybe you're still looking to get married. Or maybe you just wish that your marriage was a little stronger. Or maybe you're looking for children or grandchildren, or again, you wish that you could spend more time with your family. But what about some of those intangible or unmeasurable blessings? Don't we all want to know that we are loved? Don't we all wish that joy could fill our hearts even in the midst of challenge and struggle and trial? And, and don't we wish we could just have peace and quit stressing out and Worrying about all the problems that we have to solve. And if, if there was a, a genie in a bottle, what three wishes would you reach? Did you know there's no genie? But don't you also know that there is a God in heaven who loves you so much that all he wants to do is to fill your heart and your soul and your life with all of his blessings? The question that we want to answer today is, how does he do that? How do we receive all the blessings that we seek? And God tells us that we find his blessings in the means of grace. Now before we can actually receive blessings from God, we have to realize and acknowledge that we need God to give us the blessings. And that's not our natural line of thinking. In fact, by nature, and even, I think, because of the way that we're taught, we think that we have to secure whatever blessings we seek for ourselves. Right? We, we tell the kids, go to school, get an education, then you can get a good job. We, we tell ourselves that if we just work hard enough, or if we work smart enough, or if we network with the right people, then you can have anything that you want in this life. Dream big, if you can think it, you can achieve it. Isn't, isn't that why you work so many hours? Isn't that why you sign your kids up for every program under heaven and drive them all over the place even though you know that you don't have any rest for yourself? Isn't that why we're so excited for the beginning of the season? Because if the Packers can win the Super Bowl, then we'll have life. Isn't that why some people turn to the bottle? Isn't that why others go seeking to fulfill their inner desires through the internet or relationships with anyone they can find? We are constantly in search of blessings, thinking that we have to find them or earn them or work for them ourselves. But I ask you then, how's that going? Is your job fulfilling your life? Are the people that you love meeting all of your expectations and never letting you down? Does all the money that you save uh, give you peace and security that, that you'll, you'll always be comfortable in life? Does all of the activity give you an ongoing joy or is the win gone by the next day? The reality of sin is that we cannot and will never be able to secure the true lasting blessings that we seek on our own. In fact, that's what the Bible says. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like the shifting shadows. Only God, who is good and, and who encompasses every blessing, can give those blessings to us. But you already know that. That's why you're here. But here's how the devil turns that around. Okay, God, we need you to give us the blessings. So what do I have to do? And how often do I, do I have to go to church so that you'll fill my life with your blessings? Do I need to put a, an extra buck or two in the basket when it goes by? Uh, do, do I just need to work a little harder at living according to the Ten Commandments? 
and if it's God, if, if I meet the checklist, will, will you give me all of your blessings then? Except that's the one he Because God's standards are so high. God says that if we want to earn or deserve his blessings, we must keep his law perfectly all the time. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength, and all your mind, all the time. Love your neighbor as you saw. It's too late. Already this morning I put myself before God or before others. And God says that if, if we want what we really deserve, it's not blessing. It's suffering. It's hardship. It's death.
later brought him back into heaven. And God gave his full approval that Jesus had met every expectation and that he deserved all of God's blessings. Except Jesus did not come to get God's blessings for himself. He came to give them to you. And what blessings exactly did Jesus earn for you by his life and death? Well, it, it has to start with forgiveness for our sins. Because as long as we remain separated from God, the source of every blessing, we cannot have them. And so through his life and death, Jesus offers to take away our sin and, and reconnect us to God. To understand that. That's not a one-time operation. The forgiveness of sins is something that we need every single day. And so as we continue to sin, we continue to come back to God and to say, God, for every single one of my sins, I deserve no blessings. I deserve nothing good. But for the sake of Jesus, I beg you, have mercy on me. And then when God takes our sin away, he replaces it with those blessings. With love. God tells you that he loves you from before creation. He loves you further than the east is from the west. He has loved you as, as far and wide and long and high as love can go. God promises you joy. He doesn't say that your life will necessarily be easy and you'll never run into any problems. But he promises that even in the midst of sorrow and sadness and struggle, he will give you joy because he is your God and you are his people. He promises you peace. Yeah, you need to go to work. But you don't need to worry that God will provide enough for you to pay your bills at the end of the month or have food to eat or clothes to wear. God says that he takes care of the birds and the fish and the flowers and he'll take care of you too. We call this life. All the blessings that we seek, God gives to us. And then, on top of that, promises us eternal salvation. He promises that one day, all of, all of the, the struggles and the trials and the tribulation will all come to an end. And what was supposed to be our punishment, death, will become for us the release from sin and, and the entrance into eternal life where there is no more hunger or thirst or worry or concern or stress. Forgiveness, life, and salvation. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These are the gifts that God offers to us. But we still haven't answered the question, how? Well, through the means of grace, which are the gospel. The gospel encapsulates everything that we consider good. In fact, the word simply means good news. That good news is the fact that even though we are sinners who deserve nothing good, God gives it to us for his son, Jesus. Now the gospel comes to us three ways. We heard that in our readings earlier. Primarily, the gospel comes to us through God's work. Uh, Paul says in 2 Thessalonians, God saved us through the work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. And he called us to this through the gospel. It's the entire reason the Bible was written, right? These words are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ and that by believing, you may have life in his name. The Old Testament simply says God promised a Savior, and the New Testament simply says he came and that Savior is Jesus. Every time you hear God's word, every time you read God's word, every time you remember something that you learned from God's word, the gospel fills your heart and begins to create faith through which all of God's blessings come. I think I've used this illustration before. Faith is like a pipe or, or a conduit that connects your heart to God. And all of God's blessings, forgiveness of sins, life, joy, love, peace, patience, they all flow through that. And whenever we hear the gospel, that's what builds that faith. But God gives us two other ways to receive the gospel. He connects his word to water in holy baptism. And God, God touches our senses because as the water touches our forehead, the Holy Spirit enters our hearts and says, you should know without a doubt that you are now God's child and that he loves you and will provide for you. And then he connects the gospel or his word to bread and wine, simple everyday things that we can eat and drink. But he says that when the gospel is combined with bread and wine, you receive the very body and blood of Christ, which, which Jesus gave and poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. So should you ever wonder, or should the devil ever come to you and say, really, did God really forgive you? 
forgiven. And when your sins are forgiven, you are ready to receive all of God's blessings. So the means of grace, I want you to remember this. The means of grace are the gospel in word and sacrament. That's how God gives us presence or blessings every single day. But once you know that, doesn't it make sense to open those presents as often as you can? But why wouldn't you want to hear God's word proclaimed to you every single week in worship? Why wouldn't you want to gather together every week with God's people to study God's word at a deeper level and figure out how it applies to your life? Why wouldn't you want to receive the body and blood of Christ every single time it's offered to you? Why wouldn't you want to go home and every day remember your baptism by confessing your sin to God and remembering His promise to love you and forgive you and to fill your life with His blessing? Do you realize that the more you, the, the more time you spend connected to the gospel, the more that God will give you the blessings that you seek? Now that, that pipe, when, when, when the Holy Spirit first creates it, it's kind of small. God's blessing is crippled. And if you don't stay connected to the gospel, that pipe can spring a leak. And you start to notice that in your life. Because all of a sudden, you start to wonder if you really are loved. You start to wonder what happened to the joy. You, you get filled with stress and anxiety and, and worry. That, that, that's because the blessings, too many of them are, are escaping. And if you don't do anything about it, the, the pipe breaks completely and, and life can completely fall apart. But the opposite is also true. The more often that you hear the gospel, read the gospel, learn the gospel, that little bitty pipe begins to grow. And it gets wider and wider and wider and wider. And God's blessings begin to overflow your heart and your life and your soul. And again, that doesn't mean that you won't have any problems. What it means is that God is going to get you through that. And give you love, peace, and joy in the midst of you. So, what blessings do you seek? There's no light. And there's no genius. But there's this God in heaven who loves you so much that in spite of your sin, all he wants to do is fill you with his blessings. That's why he sent his son to live and die for you. And that's why he has given us the gospel in word and sacrament, the means of grace. Because that's exactly where you will find God's blessings. In the means of grace. In the gospel. In word and sacrament. Use them. And just see if God doesn't fill your life with his blessings. The peace of God transcends our human understanding. It will guard your hearts and minds in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to join with me in declaring the Christian faith using the Apostles' Creed. The words are presented for you on the screen.